This is Rare for On The Radar Entertainment Blog coming to another edition of MLB Observations from the 22 offseason going into this year's 2023 season Hot Stove Edition Week 19. World Baseball Classics heating up. Spring training is getting, wrapping up soon. So unfortunately in news, Andrew Painter has a UCL sprain, so that's not going to help his team with him having a UCL sprain. Kobe Allard's got oblique strain, so his chances of making the Braves are slimmer when he's injured. Uh, Harrison Bader is officially going to the disabled list, you know, injured reserve. And I don't want to be that guy, but karma is on him. He made a big deal that he wanted to represent Team Israel in the World Baseball Classic. So they had a gold glove center fielder. So Jack Peterson didn't have to play center field and he could play left field. Because Team Israel was playing an infielder in left field. And you, and you saw how bad the guy was in the spacious Miami left field. So serves him right, you know, with his oblique injury. Kansas City signed Jorge Bonifacio to minor league deal. I feel like... This is deja vu. I felt like he's played for this team before and in the minor leagues. He's like a quad A guy because he can hit a lot of home runs in AAA, but then when it comes to major league, he's just like, it doesn't really happen. He bounces around. C. Day Pelham signed a minor deal with the Padres. Organizational depth. And Logan Short to the Giants. Organizational depth. Mitch Haniger has an oblique strain, so he's going to be missing some time. What's new? This guy has a, per, has a history of being hurt, so the Giants will be without him as well. A's have cut Ernie Clement, the utility man, but the Blue Jays picked up a minor league deal again. Organizational depth. Bryce Montez and Montez de Aca has a forearm strain. It's a very weird name, but he has a forearm strain. The Mets put Zachary in out white ravers and return him back to the Yankees. Brandon Crawford's dealing with some knee issues, so he missed time, so the Giants keep losing guys there. Adrian Morin has some arm issues, so he's going to be shut down. Paul Blackburn and Manny Pena are going to be questionable for opening day. Pena was acquired to be the backup catcher to Shane Legolier. And Blackburn is one of the only good pitchers that the A's have. Freddie Pacheco has gone to Detroit. Ian Anderson and Bryce Elder have been optioned by the Braves. It was so funny. Ian Anderson had an incredible start to his career with the Atlanta Braves. And look where it's got him now. The Braves seem to have like Spencer Strider and all these other guys that take other guys' places in the rotation. So it's interesting that they've moved off him temporarily. Angels cut uh, catcher Jose Goody was on a minor league deal. Ronald Guzman has a, a Pernado strain, so the guy who's trying to make the Giants team as a pitcher and a position player, he's injured. K, uh, Casey puts Angels up hard on the 60-day disabled list. Garrett Hampson has made the roster for the Marlins with Anthony Bender going a 60-day list. I knew this. Garrett Hampson is a very valuable two-way player. I mean, a uh, utility guy. He can play everywhere at this point. But as I told you, the Marlins have too many infielders with Birdie, uh, Arise, Jazz Chisholm, and and uh, Joey Wendell, and Gene Segura that I don't know if they're going to make him play the outfield. He's not even an outfielder. Sam Coonrad has agreed. Lad Strain. Trevor Kelly has been added to the Rays roster while Andrew Kittelich is on the 60th of the Sable list because, of course, we knew he was injured in the offseason. Rays acquired Victor Kestadania to complete the Javi Guerra trade. Hernan Perez, a super utility man, is signed with the Twins. That's good for the Twins. They get some, you know, versatility on their team in case of an injury. Jaco to Rizzi is going to start the year on the injured list. So is Mark Melanson with a shoulder injury. The Rangers are going seven, eight deep. So if he misses time, it's not the big deal for them. They just want him healthy towards the end of the season. And Melanson is that math closer. They kind of want him to be healthy because he could be a trade candidate. Sade Savali of the Nationals at Tommy John surgery is going to be out for the rest of the year. Giants have brought back Sergio Romo on a minor league deal. Maybe he'll make the team because, again, the Giants' bullpen is not as fearsome as it was when they had Javier Lopez and him and Brian Wilson and these other pitchers. It's just not the same. The Tigers, Jackson, Job, and Dylan Ginger both have a spine. One has a spine injury, one has a knee injury. They're going to miss time. Jake Brents, the Royals pitcher, has been extended for a two-year deal. Locked them up. Joe Panic is officially a special assistant with the Giants, so I guess that means his career is over. That's like his official title now. And Keybart Ruiz got an eight-year extension with the Nationals, which I understand because he's supposed to be, when the Dodgers traded him, the best catching prospect in baseball, a really fine defensive player, and I'll have to figure out offensively later. But then they're the team that also got another rookie catcher, and I was like, why would you go with two rookie catchers at once? That made absolutely no sense. But they, they definitely chose him. He's going to be there for eight years. Longer, more. Corbin Carroll, the Dimebacks outfit, they barely just got up to the big leagues, also got an eight-year extension, which I'm like, okay, cool. You got rid of Cooper Hummel and Dalton Varsho, two catchers who have no business playing in the outfield. Maybe now you can, I don't know, make Pevin Smith the DH so that no longer are you playing any infielders in the outfield. 
speaking to you, Cattell Marte, don't go to the outfield. Because they got plenty of outfielders this team and that he should be able to be uh, solidify that outfield. Unfortunate news for Craig Stamen, who just recently turned 39. He's a torn capsule in the right shoulder, and it's going to take him out for the rest of the season. The former national starter and setup man reliever and longtime Padres pitcher is on a mildly deal with the Padres, where it seems like he's just there every year. He's not ruling out this is the end of his career, but it's going to be very hard for a guy in his 40s to try to come back from a major injury and be a major league pitcher, so it's sad to see that. Venezuela officially beat the Dominican Republic in this tournament so far for the first time ever. Taiwan, China, and Nicaragua will have to re-qualify among some of the teams that have to. Italy, surprisingly, and Japan, not surprisingly. Cuba, interestingly, along with Venezuela, Mexico, and Puerto Rico and the United States, obviously advanced. A little surprising that Dominican Republic didn't, but it's a tough bracket when it's Venezuela, Puerto Rico, Nicaragua, Israel, and, and obviously the Dominican Republic. Israel got the short stick of being in the wrong bracket, but it is what it is, and Mexico is really good. I knew there was going to be them in the United States because I, I didn't think that Canada was good this year. Japan had made all 570 finals in these tournaments, and that's cool. Great Britain and Canada's game had the most runs scored in a single game of 25, and Jake and uh, Trevor Bauer, because nobody wants to sign a guy who won a Cy Young and was one of the best pitchers in baseball, and only had one domestic violence or abuse report that he had to deal with, and Major League Baseball spent it for two years, while Deshaun Watson had countless issues with women and massage polish and all this other stuff, and he got like a one-year suspension, now he's getting the most money ever guaranteed for quarterback, like, you know, the world we live in, how it's different for different people, like, I just don't get it. Quintana, unfortunately, had rib surgery, so he's going to be out till July. So the Mets are now without Quintana. And there's foreign import pitcher He's or Carrasco's never been healthy. And, of course, we know that the, that uh, Scherzer and Verlander are up there in age. So it's going to be really, you know, thin year for the Mets pitching-wise. Diamond Sports officially dropped the D-backs and the Guardians and the Padres and the Reds. Well, MLB is planning to stream the games for free temporarily to the figure out situation. While the Astros are trying to take over the AT&T Sports Network Southwest to avoid this issue, while the Diamondbacks want to acquire the streaming, I mean, excuse me, while Diamond Sports, even though that they dropped those four teams, they want to acquire streaming rights for fourteen teams. Like, if you're already fighting for bankruptcy and four teams, you know, have been dropped, why do you want fourteen teams? And the Rangers want to terminate their deal with them. So it's like a mess. The so Texas Rangers want to uh, uh, terminate their deal. They drop four teams. It makes no sense. They want to pick up 14 teams. And the Astros are trying to own their regional sports network. Sad news for Nick Senzel, one of favorite players. He won't be ready for open day as, again, the man can't stay healthy. And I feel like it's a lot of stress for a middle infielder to have to play center field every day when he's not a center fielder. But that's just me. Nicaragua. Uh, Duque Heber, based on his performance, signed with Detroit. So it's always good that somebody was watching this real baseball classic and goes, you know what? That guy deserves to be on a, on a team. Giants have lost another person as Luis Gonzalez has back surgery, so he's going to be out for a while. So they can't catch a break. Crawford and him and and all these other and, – and it's just like you're just losing guys right and left, and it's just – They've had some trouble this offseason with guys staying healthy. Lamonte Wade Jr. is injured, so that's not good for them. Yu Chang, Shoei Otani, and Salvador Perez were three of the MVPs from their tournament, which makes sense because Yu Chang all of a sudden woke up, and Otani's Otani, and Salvador Perez, Salvador Perez. There was a 24 hour, 48, uh, 48 run, Division three run game, 11 a.m. on March 13, that went all the way to March 14, 11 a.m., 10. So they basically, after the game was like tied, at like late at night, they're like, you know, we're gonna stop this game and they continue. So that's a pretty interesting thing to have a division three game, have a, that amount of runs and a tie, and they have to pause it. The Yankees supposedly do not cover Wi Fi on the team plane, which makes no sense because they're one of the richest teams in baseball. Why they're skimping out on that? Major League Baseball Network and Apple are gonna show the Zoom replay ops live when they do the replay thing, so that's gonna be cool to see. The Orioles have moved Mike Bauman to the bullpen, and then the Mets can't catch a break. They can't have anything nice. They went out and signed, re-signed Brandon Nimmo this offseason. They went out and got Verlander, and they got the foreign import pitcher, and they got Quintana because they lost out all the other guys, relievers that left them. They re-signed Edwin Diaz to all this money, and uh, they go out and get a new catcher, Omar Navarez, and they were going to almost get Carlos Correa, and they got Dave Robertson in the bullpen. Well, guess what? Edwin Diaz, while... Well, his team, Puerto Rico, was celebrating their win, moving to the next round. They didn't win the whole thing, but they celebrated 
to moving on to the next round, and he got injured in the celebration. And I was just like, and he has a knee surgery, and he's going to have to miss the whole entire year with a pelvic tendon injury. And it's just so unfortunate that the Mets can't catch a break. Already injuries to their rotation, and now injuries to their closer. Like, I, they can't win. Like, at least the good thing to sign Dave Robertson, because then they at least got a former closer there. This Masada, Ma, Ma, Masaka Yoshida has 10 RBIs, the most ever by a uh, Japanese player through this, like, short period of time in a tournament. The Red Sox import looks like he's maybe the real deal, and people can be quiet about they overpaid for him. Michael Kay announced he's staying with the ESPN Radio called the Yankees. There were talks about his, uh, him retiring. Andrew Tolles will get another contract from the L.A. Dodgers so that he can have medical benefits to deal with the mental health issues he has, which is what you see. The Dodgers actually care about their players if they do something like this, even though it's a business. Well, the Yankees are like, ah, you got to pay for Wi-Fi. You see the difference with certain teams. Evan Marshall, former White Sox reliever, signed a minor deal with the Angels. This late in spring training, I don't know when he's going to be called up, but the Angels don't have enough pitching, no matter if it's rotation or bullpen. So that he's going to play at some point. Tony Gossett, the fortune, is going to miss opening day, and they're already, as, as we mentioned, without Walker Bueller. Really short-handed the Dodgers rotation as they lost three to four guys in this offseason, so not great. Mets have acquired Dennis and Tan off waivers. That's good. They get some more organizational depth in the bullpen. And the Diamondbacks, who one of the teams that were dropped by Diamond Sports, they, 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 got, they didn't get their payment, which, again, is just like, come on. Now, we have some sad news to report. In the baseball world, Luis Andres Ortiz Soriano has passed away, battle with cancer. He was just 20 years old, signed with the Orioles, a free agent that they've been in the 2019 thing. And he did not pitch, obviously, the last year due to cancer, so just sad to lose somebody that young. Rest in peace to Jesus Alou, the, alf- the brother of Maddie and Felipe, where they had the history of three brothers playing in the outfield. Passed away at the age of 80. He played for the Giants, Astros, A's, Mets, and Astros again, and was on two World Series championship teams when he was a backup on the A's. And he could say in his career, you know, a 280 lifetime batting average is pretty good. 32 and 377 home runs. RBIs. It's not a lot when you're a backup, but you get to play with your brothers and make history, and you win two World Series. Not a bad career. And even after baseball, he was a scout for the Expos and the Marlins and the club director of Dominican Operations. And he worked with the Red Sox, who is his part-time role as a special assistant ambassador of scouting international player development. He's in the Heritage, Hispanic Heritage Baseball Museum Pioneer as well. So rest in peace to Jesus Alou. Rest in peace to Jean Foss, the softball legend, passed away in 98. She was a two-time player of the year, four-time All-Star, two-time champion, six times in the playoffs. She won the triple pitching crown twice. All-time leader in earn run average, all-time second in wins, three times where she's single leader in win strikeouts in ERA, and a single season record in shutouts. Three times she won 20 games. She threw two perfect games and two no hitter. She literally was one of the greatest softball players ever. So rest in peace to her. Rest in peace to Yankees legend Joe Pepitone, the former Astro Cup and Brave outside of the Yankees. Also was famous for going over to Japan at the end of his career. Won the World Series in his rookie season with the Yankees. So his career started off great. Then he won three gold gloves when he was on the Yankees. and I mean, all-star appearances, excuse me. And then he won three gold gloves. Okay, all with the Yankees as well. So it's just had to lose the legendary Joe Pepitone. Because when you have three all-star appearances, three gold gloves in a World Series title, and you have over 219 career home runs, 721 RBIs, and bad 258, you had a pretty good career. So, it was just rest in peace to Joe Pepitone as well. Get a little happier news. If this is happier, Jordan Yamato, the Hawaiian native, former Mets, Marlins, and Dodgers pitcher, has announced his retirement at the age of 26. I feel like it's a little bit too early for a guy who's 26. But when your lifetime career average is six, and you have a losing record, and you have under 100 strikeouts in a league, in a world where you strike out a lot of guys, I guess it's time to say happy trails to him on his career. And as I mentioned, this is week 19 of the Hustle edition of the 2023 season after the 2022 offseason. For On the Radar 10 Black, I'm Radar. See you guys next time. And be on the lookout for my baseball preview of the whole entire league. All 30 teams, written coming out, divisions and playoffs and award predictions are coming out separately. And of course, the separate podcast for all of them. See you guys next time.